Hey everyone, Richard Cranium here with a new video. Before the video starts, I want to say a huge thank you for all the support. The Cabal has grown to 260 initiates at the time of recording this, and I have no words other than thank you for all the support. Today's video is going to be a quick one, but it's knowledge that will keep you going in the long run. We're talking about repairing items. Daisy is more about scavenging than creating, so keeping your items in as good a shape as possible is super important. There are eight types of kits, duct tape included to repair items. Duct tape, sewing kits, leather sewing kits, sharpening stones, electrical repair kits, epoxy putty, gun cleaning kits, and tire repair kits. Some of these, like the tire repair kit, epoxy putty, and electrical repair kits can all be found within the same areas, so I'm going to group up items and where to find them. In civilian areas, which include office buildings and houses, you can find sewing kits, leather sewing kits, and duct tape. In hunting areas like hunting cabins and hunting stands, you can find leather sewing kits and gun cleaning kits. You can also find gun cleaning kits in military bases. In work and construction areas, you can find electrical repair kits, epoxy putty, tire repair kits. All of these can usually be found in garages as well. And on farming areas, you can find sharpening stones. Sewing kits are used for clothing items like jackets and pants, mainly cloth, so tents and ghillie suits are included. You can also use them to repair leading. Leather sewing kits are used for shoes and backpacks. I also have a 1.1 update guide you can watch after this that shows you how to craft the new leather backpack. Gun cleaning kits are the only repair kit that fix guns and that's just plain and simple. Electrical repair kits fix flashlights, gun sights, generators, transceivers, really most things with batteries. They also fix wire and barbed wire and I don't know why so please don't ask me. Epoxy putty fixes helmets as well as car doors and chassis and are so small so you gotta keep an eye out for them. Repairing most items is super easy and simple, just combine them or look at them. When it comes to the chassis and the card parts, it can be a little difficult because you can only repair the doors and the chassis and it's kind of hard to get to, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. The way that I do it just to make sure is I get to a good spot so I don't get blasted. I take the door off, then I combine it with the epoxy putty. Trying to get the chassis is difficult because it doesn't really tell you when it's about to break, you kind of have to go and look. Just take the epoxy putty, kind of lay on your stomach, look around the chassis, and you should get the prompt to fix it. Once you see the prompt, you then just go in and make sure that the circle fills up, and now it's starting to be repaired. Tire repair kits are used to repair the Ogla, Gunter, ADA 4x4, and the M3S truck tires. Sharpening stones are used to repair bladed and pointed weapons like hacksaws, axes, and pickaxes. Just on a side note, if an item is completely ruined, you will not be able to fix it. There are tiers to this. There's ruined, badly damaged, damaged, worn, and pristine. You can usually tell if an item is damaged as it starts to change colors and shows that it's deteriorating. Once you've noticed that an item is damaged, you then can either take the item while it's on the ground and combine it with a sewing kit in your inventory, or if you take it, you can take any of the repair items and just aim at the item you are trying to repair, hold the button that you're going to use to complete the action, and then boom, you're going to notice that everything is going up. Each one of these has a particular amount of uses, usually between like 4 and 5, so they don't last forever, so you have to pick and choose when you're going to repair your items. What I did in order to learn DayZ is I rented a server. This video was shot on a server I purchased through GTX server hosting. I choose GTX for the UI and the plethora of games to make servers for from DayZ to Arc and even Rust. Adding mods is super quick and easy, no creating folders, just install and go. If you want to support the channel and get yourself a DayZ server to learn on, go to gtxserverhosting.com using the link in the description and you can support the channel and get yourself a server. And now with that out of the way, I also want to mention that the Creation Station Discord server is now up and running. The link is going to be in the description, so feel free to come by. It is still new and I'm still adding things, but it's going to be a place for everybody to come, talk about what they need to learn, and there's going to be access to my server, the Cranium Cabal. 
you will be able to go in and get in there. It's a small server because it just started, but I'm hoping to be able to get people in there and maybe even run some tutorials in real life or even just play with some people. That one is currently only on PC, but as things start to grow, I plan on adding in an Xbox and a PS4 server. I just want to let everybody know that I'm super excited to make more videos. I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of wanted to quit a while ago, but each comment coming in telling me that the video was super helpful, people flooding my DMs on Twitter, it was just a little too much for me to really grasp. So make sure that you subscribe for more videos, I'm going to keep them coming. Follow my Twitch if you ever want to ask me questions live, or you just want to come and hang out while I play some games, or you can come join me if you have it on PC. Otherwise, I am Richard Cranium. Thank you for watching and have a great day.